What's going on? Welcome back to our channel, Naughty Life. My name is Alex, and today, back by popular demand, we are doing another rigging video uh, focusing on the dropper rig today. Now, the dropper rig is a super easy, very versatile rig uh, that you can use, and we wanted to highlight it here because here in Southwest Florida, as we move into fall and winter and the colder months, as the water temperature drops, we like to focus on fishing around structure and targeting sheep's head. Now, if you're brand new to fishing, you're not super familiar with what a sheep's head is, we're gonna drop a picture of it right here. Essentially, it looks like a football. It's got black and white zebra stripes on it, and it's most known for its absolutely crazy, almost human-like teeth, uh, which are really designed to help with their diet. So they've got primarily a diet of crustaceans, so shrimp, sand fleas, fiddler crabs, but those teeth are really designed to chew barnacles off of pilings. Now, we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time talking about sheep's head, actually, uh, no more, in fact, because this video is a prequel to our next video, which is gonna be all about targeting and different rigs to use for sheep's head, but the dropper rig is one of our favorites, and it's one that is Super, super easy to tie once you uh, know a couple of tricks. Now, again, we're not professionals, but we've done a lot of our own research. And just by you know trial and error tying this hundreds of times, we've made some tweaks and found some things that make it really simple uh, that you can almost tie with your eyes closed. So if you enjoy this video, you enjoy fishing tutorials, knots, as well as on the water content, or you're interested in learning more about how to target sheep's head, Make sure you click the subscribe button. It's free for you to do, helps out the channel a ton. And with that, we're gonna get right into tying this rig. All right, so before we talk about some of the terminal tackle and actually get into tying the dropper rig, let's quickly discuss the best time to use this rig. Now, when you're fishing for sheep's head or fishing for any type of fish around structure, you want to be able to get your rig all the way down to the bottom. If you have the ability to get directly vertical over your spot, then there's other rigs that will work a little bit better, which we'll cover in another video. The primary use for a dropper rig is to cast to structure when there's current if you're not able to get perfectly vertical. So think if you're fishing off of a pier trying to cast underneath the pier, if you're fishing from a boat or a kayak trying to cast out to a bridge piling or to another piece of structure that's just out of reach from being vertical, as well as if you're fishing you know, from the shore and you're casting out to a, a piece of structure. So just like our other video, we are using 80 pound braid uh, as well as oversized terminal tackle just for demonstration sake. This rig is going to be tied to either a mono or a fluorocarbon leader. Either works just as fine as the other. Uh, there's really no preference. We typically just use what's ever laying around on the boat. And all this rig is, is a bank sinker or some type of other weight tied to your line. And then about eight to 10 inches up above that, you've got a split off and your hook tied to it. So this basically holds on the bottom and this allows the bait to swing around in the current. Now this is again a very easy rig to tie, but there are a couple of things that you're going to need and none of these work better than others. If you've got pyramid sinkers instead of bank sinkers, really both are gonna work just as good. So use whatever you have in your tackle box lying around. Here we have a couple of different options. We've got a pyramid sinker, which essentially is just that, a pyramid. You tie your line to this, it sits down into the sand. And what this allows to do is while it's in the current, you've got more of a, a driving point with that type of weight. Uh, what we'll typically be using is a bank sinker. So this just has a simple hole at the top you tie it onto your line, and this is gonna be able to hold this rig down on the bottom near your structure and put tension on the main line so you can feel these bites a little bit more. It helps to improve the, the sensitivity. Now, if you're fishing somewhere that has a lot of contradicting currents that are coming from uh, you know many sides, you may want to look at using uh, one of these drop weights, an egg weight with a swivel. So what that would allow it to do is have this weight sit at the bottom and then your hook can swivel freely without wrapping up your line. So 
All of these work pretty well. Doesn't matter really what you're using. The main thing you want to note when you're picking a weight is you want to use a weight that's going to be heavy enough for the depth and for the current that you're fishing. If you're in deep water with heavy current, you're going to likely need to use a much heavier weight to get that bait all the way down to the bottom and positioned where you want it. Uh, one thing to note as well, if you are using a heavier weight, make sure you're using a rod that is suitable for that type of weight. You don't want to use a four or five ounce bank sinker with a medium light fast action pole that's going to be already bent because you have to remember when you catch that fish, not only are you reeling in the fish, but you're also reeling in that weight. So if you don't use a heavy enough pole, you have the potential of breaking your gear and you're going to have a bad time. So last thing to cover here in terms of weights, you can tie the weight directly onto the line or you can use one of these barrel swivels. So basically you tie this swivel to your line and then you have this little clip here that makes it really easy to switch those weights in and out um, if you're fishing a couple different spots and have different currents that you're fighting. Now this is totally optional. You can also tie a overhand knot with a loop. Quickly swap out these bank sinkers as well if you don't have any of these bell bearing swivels laying around. Lastly, let's quickly talk about the different size hooks that we're using. So here we have a size one octopus hook. This is typically gonna be our hook of choice for fishing for sheep's head. You can see it's a very small hook so you're able to hide that bait because the sheep's head you know, will be a little bit finicky at times. If we're going for a little bit larger fish, you can obviously bump it up. This is a size 2.0 circle hook. It's just a little bit bigger hook. And if we are in an area where we know there's bigger uh, black drum or larger fish that might be hanging around the structure, you can even size this up as well. Uh, it just really depends on the size of bait that you're using. That's the most important part when you're picking out hooks. With that being said, that covers all of the terminal tackle that you're gonna need for this type of rig. We're gonna go ahead and tie this dropper rig right now. Okay, so now let's get into tying the dropper rig. So again, as we mentioned already, uh, and in our previous video, for demonstration purposes only, we're gonna be using this 80 pound high vis yellow braid, an oversized hook and an oversized weight, just so you can see it properly. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can tie this knot. We found it to be the easiest if you start by tying your weight on first. So what we're gonna do for this example, we're gonna tie the weight directly to our line. Pull out four feet or so, maybe a little bit longer, if you're just getting into tying knots and you need a little bit of extra practice. Start by feeding your line through the weight. Now we're not gonna spend a whole bunch of time on this. If you are interested in learning how to tie this clinch knot, which we're using to get this tied on quickly, you can click the link in the description box below, but we're just gonna tie this on with a simple clinch knot there. Now, once you have your weight in place, obviously this line is going up to your spool of leader. Uh, you can clip it at four feet. We like to leave it on because that's gonna allow you to adjust your hook depth once you get a little bit further on. So once your weight is tied, what you're gonna do is take your dominant hand, take your thumb and index finger, run it about 10 or 12 inches up on the leader line. With your non-dominant hand, you're gonna take and you're gonna create an okay sign around your dominant thumb and index finger. And then you're going to pull the line through that okay sign. So you can see we're now creating this loop over here in your dominant hand. Once you get to about eight inches, go ahead and pinch with your non-dominant hand, thumb and index finger. So you basically have the line coming up from the weight and you've got this new strand and loop that you've created over here. The next part of this is you're gonna take the loop that's created and you're gonna come and you're gonna flip it around and you're going to tie an overhand knot. So you bring it up and through and just create a simple overhand knot. Once you create that overhand knot, you're going to wrap that line three or four times back through 
till you get something that looks just like that. Once you wrap it through, simply pull to cinch that knot down and you'll have something that looks just like this. So you've got your weight down here, you've got your leader running up to your main line going that way, and you've got this nice little loop that you've created right here. The next step in tying this is you're going to take a scissors or a knife and you're going to cut one of these strands on this loop. Now we prefer to cut the lower one. Uh, it really doesn't matter which you use. But now what you can see you've done here is you've created your split off for your dropper rig. So you've got your weight going here, you've got your leader going up to your main line, and you can see there's a really good bit of tension on that line, which is perfect because as you, you'll see when we tie this hook on here, the more tension you have, the better your ability is to feel those fish biting. Lastly, go ahead and take your hook. You can use whatever knot you feel most comfortable with that you feel is the strongest and you're going to go ahead and tie your hook to that split off that you created there. Again, we're just gonna tie a simple clinch knot just to speed this process along, cinch it down, clip your tag end, and there you have it. That is a complete dropper rig. Now, one pro tip to note is that when you do create this split off, you wanna make sure that the hook doesn't go any further down past this weight. So you can see when you bring this hook all the way down, it's just slightly above this weight. And what that's gonna prevent is tangling as this is floating around in the current, as well as it's going to keep the bait suspended and up off the bottom. You don't wanna have this sitting on the bottom. We're not fishing for catfish although you're probably gonna catch some catfish because you always do when you're out there, but you wanna make sure that when this is sitting on the ground, this is gonna be suspended. And by having the hook split off line shorter than the line going to the weight, it allows you to put yourself in the best position to make sure this bait is suspended in the water. From here, all you need to do is pull off the amount of leader line that you'd like to have, snip it off, and then tie this to your main line braid with either an FG knot, a swivel, or whatever leader to braid knot you feel most comfortable with. Now finally, we're gonna tie it one more time using a barrel swivel clip and actual fluorocarbon line. Now this is 80 pound, a little bit overkill, but it's a little bit thicker so you can see it a little bit better. We're typically gonna be using anywhere from 20 to 30 pound, maybe even a bit lighter depending on the clarity of the water. So go ahead, pull yourself out about four or five feet of leader. Again, we like to keep it attached just in case we need to restart. So first, 
We're gonna go ahead and tie the swivel on, clip your tag end. Now for this, again, you wanna put your weight on first. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use one of these pyramid sinkers. So we've got that weight on there. Once your weight is on, we're gonna follow the same steps as before. Taking your dominant hand, running it up the line, creating an okay sign around with your non-dominant hand, pulling the leader through, pinching, coming through, tying your overhand knot, wrapping it three to four times through, and pulling. Now you can see we've got the weight down here, we've got the main line coming up this way, and we've got this loop created. Go ahead, snip that bottom strand so you've got your split off coming this way. Then take your hook, tie your hook on to that split line using your preferred knot. And there you have it. A dropper rig tied with fluorocarbon leader. Now what's really cool about this is sure, you can have just one hook on here if you want, but if you come up a little bit further on the line and do the same process again, you could essentially create a high-low rig and have two, three, four, as many different hooks on here as you'd like. Uh, you can make sabikis using this method. Again, just a super easy, really quick way to tie on a rig that is almost unstoppable when it comes to uh, fishing around structure for sheep's head and other fish that like to hold around structure. All right, so we hope today's tutorial was super helpful for you. Again, please like, comment, share this video, subscribe. Uh, we're trying to get 2,000 subscribers here before the end of the year, so every single one counts. Again, totally free for you to do. It's very much appreciated. We're trying to do some uh, more giveaways and stuff as we continue to grow this channel. Uh, so please, again, like, comment, share, subscribe. It means a ton to us. With that being said, life short, live naughty. We'll catch you in the next one.